What are some of the strongest piano exercises to raise your abilities to the next level? Let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and this is a follow-up video to a previous one I did about diatonic exercises and they're really great for musicians, especially music producers that are trying to get better at the keyboards and raise their abilities every day. And I want to do a follow-up where we do exercises that I have found have raised my abilities the fastest. And I think you actually might be surprised with some of these. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so you'll recall from the last video we talked about tenths, which is sort of this interval here. And we're just tracking it going up the major scale. And that just naturally creates a series of chords in the key of C major. And that's diatonic in a nutshell, right? So how can we take this and, you know, take it much further and do something more interesting with it? What I like to do is stack on more intervals. So you'll recognize this as well from the last video, but I can also add on the ninth with my thumb on the right hand here. You get a really beautiful major nine voicing. And this works really well going up the scale as well. It might sound kind of interesting or even awkward at first, but where this really shines is in the arpeggiations. Where I hit the right hand thumb and pinky at the same time. And then come back to some of the lower notes. And that creates a really nice pattern. You hold down the sustain pedal and just go up and down. Here, I'll do it without the sustain pedal so you can see it. This also brings up a neat compositional trick, which is using ninths within the arpeggiations or even the melodies that we're playing with the right hand. And I like to use it a lot because you can get a lot of variations. If I want to challenge my left hand, play something more like an octave, instead of the perfect fifth, we'll go to here. And then my right hand, instead of these intervals here, I'll go up here. So thumb and pinky on right hand, it reveals these notes in the middle. So index, middle finger. And you have another really sweet, beautiful chord. It sounds really good with sustain. It sounds really good um, as a melody or an arpeggio. And uh, it's basically the same idea. And there's a lot of other really useful ways to challenge your left hand. I have a skill I like to call tracking, where I'm moving my hand across multiple octaves to create a much more bigger, maybe cinematic sound uh, with the keyboards. And it's a great skill to learn. And uh, diatonic exercises are actually perfect for this. So uh, yeah, let's try it. So what I want you to do is to play a lower octave down here, and you're gonna track your left hand. So look at where the thumb on your left hand is and bring your pinky there to play this right here. So my pinky takes the place of my thumb on my left hand and my thumb goes back up in that perfect fifth. So if you've been practicing these exercises, you probably have some muscle memory in your left hand to go into perfect fifths. And this is a really great way to um, extend those skills. So we start here and here. Do the same thing for D, here and here, here and here. And as you're doing that, you can add in the 10th that we've used from, you know, previous exercises um, with the right hand. All right, so what I might do is I'll start with my octave, I'll hit my perfect fifth, and I'm going back to my original shape, and then I just track going up. So you might recognize that technique. It's used a lot in cinematic piano pieces, and it's a really great way to develop 
what I like to call tracking. Another technique I really like is just taking simple melodies and applying them with the right hand, but then taking it to another key. And if I go to the key of G, I'm gonna add in the F sharp key. And having a simple melody in the right hand is a perfect way to get yourself started in a key signature besides C. And it won't be as overwhelming, it won't be this crazy, uh, you know, learning curve that we sometimes are presented with when we try to learn covers on the piano and stuff like that. Diatonic exercises are perfect for learning more key signatures like G. Okay, so here's a really simple melody. So it's built off of that original voicing we've been doing a lot of, and then I just kind of hit these other notes here, sort of playing an E minor chord above my C major chord, so the three chord above my left hand, which is settling us down into the one chord. And it creates a C major seven, so it's a really sweet melody. Very fun to play. And we could take that same exact idea and go to the key of G. So a G major scale as the F sharp, right? So now we're gonna introduce a black key to our playing. Perfect way to do it with one of these sweet melodies. And you're gonna notice that right off the bat, that melody transposed from originally it was here, right? We're gonna transpose it down and right off the bat, we've got F sharp. Okay, so another thing we can add in is contrary motion. So a lot of times they teach you contrary motion by putting both thumbs on C, index fingers on both hands, middle, back to thumb on both hands, index, middle, ring, pinky, and they just come back in. What I like to do is use it diatonically a slightly different way. I like to go outward and then inward, or start from out and then go in. And um, I basically do it like this. So I start with that same power chord in the left hand that we're used to doing, and I start with an octave at the top. And what I do is I'm gonna move up this scale, just like we've been doing, but using a contrary pattern with the right hand. So the right hand will be on C as I move up, I'm gonna hit this right here. This is basically like a D minor seven, except we don't have the third. And then both hands are gonna to start to move towards each other. Towards each other. And then on this next one, I'm just gonna have my right hand go to F and G as this comes up. And then on the next one, I'm gonna let my left hand come up and just revert to just the G in the right hand. And then I'm gonna play my B diminished chord and my major third, and then back out. So yeah, those are some exercises that really helped me grow as a piano player, and I hope you found them useful. Hope they give you a lot of inspiration with your own music. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to the channel. I do a bunch of videos on keyboards and music production topics, and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next video. Have fun making music.